Hey guys, what's up? It's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to take input from the user. Right now, there's the app over here. You click on, there's the toast saying on, just click off, there's the toast message saying off, but nothing happens as far as the timer is concerned over here. And how can we pop up an input box or a dialog box or anything of that sort that's going to let the user enter the amount of seconds that he or she wants to run the countdown for. And that can be done in several hundred ways as far as Android is concerned. And some of the more fancier ways will be covered in our premium courses. But for now, let's pop up a simple alert dialog that has a single edit text or a text feed as you call it, where the user can enter the amount of time that they want to run it for. And then we can take that input and process it, right? So the way you do that is first understand where that method needs to be called. Now here in the on check change method, if you remember, when the toggle button is checked, then the if condition executes. If it is unchecked, the else condition executes, right? Right here inside the on check change in this part here, what I'm going to do is create a dialog. The way we create a dialog box is to use an alert dialog dot builder. Now there's a more fancier way to use the dialog fragment, which again, I'm not going to cover right now. So I'm going to say alert dialog dot builder here. Wait a second, there are two of them. Did you notice that? There's alert dialog, there's android.app, and there's android.support.v7.app. Now, you want to always ensure that you use the one from support, and that's because this works even on the older devices. So, I'm going to select this one. Oops, I'll have to go up and change the imports at the top of my app here. Just click on the import tab here, expand it. You notice that android.app.dialog is already imported, which is why we were getting that complete name coming up there. So I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna go down and now I'm gonna try constructing the dialog inside the is checked method here. And the way I do that is to simply say alert dialog. This is the support v7.builder. Notice there's a builder here, which is again from the support.v7 package here. Builder is new alert dialog dot builder as you call it and he's noticed that it is going to ask you two things the context and theme now remember that your activity actually is a subclass of context so we can simply pass this here to indicate the context and we are not going to supply a theme so that's all for now now we can use this variable builder and we can set a lot of things on it like for example we can say builder dot set title and we can say please enter the time now again this should not be present in java because you may need, need to release this app in different languages and therefore i suggest you put this text inside the strings.xml i will get to that but first let's just test this out right so please enter the time here something like that and i'm going to simply go and say builder dot show so that is going to pop or display the dialog let's take a look at this in action you just go and click run here at the top you come back to our app so there you go you click on and it says please enter the time i click outside the dialog disappears click off click on again there's the time over here and i click outside it disappears so that is how you can make a dialog the dialog is good but that's not what we want we want a dialog that has an edit text or text field as you call it where the user can type something but your builder over here that is the builder dot blah 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 there is no method that lets you directly do that however there is this method here which is called set view you see every widget in android is basically a view so you can add your own views by making them to do that we can do the following steps we can go to xml build our edit text over there try to get that edit text from xml to java and then link it here with the alert dialog dot builder indicating that hey use this edit text from my xml file and display that inside the dialog so let's do that so to create an edit text in XML, we go to the left side of our project navigator here. In the layout, we simply right click and say new, we say layout resource file. When we do that, it's going to ask us the name of that file. We can call that as user input. And once you do that, it says the root element, should it be a linear, la linear layout? Now we don't need a layout in our case. All we need is simply an edit text in the entire layout file. So I'm just going to enter edit text as a root element, directory name layout, okay. And click OK over here. Once I do that, there's my user input.xml file. Now you cannot see much over here, but if you go to the text part, you notice that there is just an edit text out here with the XML and the width and the height attributes. You can just say Control Alt L or Command Option L on your Mac to format and reformat stuff out here. Now all we need to do is specify an ID so that we can get a hold of this edit text in Java. So I'm just going to supply an ID here. We're saying Android ID. 
and call that as text input. Once done, I'll go back to the main activity and all I can do now is by saying builder dot set view. And here I can specify the layout resource file that we just made, which will be r dot layout dot user input. And that's all. Now, if you save this and if you run this, let's see what happens. So there's the timer app starting click on this time. You notice that the dialog says, please enter the time and it's staying here. You click outside, it disappears. Click off, click on again. And you notice that if you click outside, it disappears. But this way you can at least enter the time. The issue, however, is that we need to get the data that is entered inside this edit text. To do that, we need a reference to that edit text in Java. Now, I know you guys are going to say go and use the find view by ID method by simply saying like this find view by ID, right? Now, this is not going to work. The reason for that is the find view by ID is going to find something that is inside the activity underscore main dot XML. The edit text is contained in a separate file, which is user underscore input dot XML. So first, we need to find a way to bring this XML file itself into Java and then try to find the edit text using its ID from this particular file. Now this is done with the help of some class called layout inflator. If you're not sure what a layout inflator is, you can go to my channel slide nerd, go to playlist, the Android tutorial for beginners, the videos number 81 and 82 covered the layout inflator in detail. So be sure to watch these two videos before you get to this part. So let's go back to Android Studio and construct our layout inflator in the main activity. All I have to do is go to the same place here and say layout inflator. Inflator equals to layout inflator dot from and I will pass the context over here and that gives me an object of type layout inflator. I will use this object to get an XML file converted to Java by saying inflator dot inflate and here I need to pass the name of the XML file that in our case would be that file containing our edit text. So that is going to be r dot layout dot user input and then I'm going to pass a null parameter here. Again, this is explained in that video. So going back inflate, this is going to give me a view object here, which I can directly assign here by saying view view. Now we got to make sure that we import that view object. So just hit alt enter or option return on your Mac. Now we need a reference to that edit text so that we can access the data that is contained inside it. Now, if you remember this view object here simply contains the root element from the user underscore input dot XML file. Now we know that the root element is an edit text in our case, but if you go and add something else over here, the root element may change. So let's initialize the edit text from this file by simply saying edit text text user input equals to view dot find view by ID. Now notice how I'm calling find view by ID. I'm using this view object because this view is basically a representation of this file over here. So within that file, I'm going to search for the ID, which is r dot id dot user input or text input. So once I do that, I'm going to get the same kind of type casting error, which we usually get. Just hit alt enter or option return on your Mac and cast it and we are good to go. Now, one more thing I need to do is see if we are actually getting that data inside our text user input. In other words, we want to test whether we are getting this information or not. If you guys remember, dialogs usually have buttons like OK and Cancel. Now, the alert dialog.builder here lets you add those kind of buttons. We can simply go here and say builder.setPositive button. And as you notice, there are two forms of this method. The first one takes a string and something called an onclick listener. The second one takes a text ID and again an onclick listener. Let's use the first one for now. And here I'm going to say OK for the positive button. Now the second parameter on click listener simply means what should happen or who should respond when this button is clicked for now let's just pass null here let's worry about it later and i'll say builder dot set negative button for the cancel part here and i'll call this cancel over here again i'm going to pass null for the on click listener so once i do that i have my edit text with both the buttons ready on running the app when you click on now you notice that the dialog pops open and we have cancel and ok button here you click on cancel and it goes on you click off click on again click on ok it goes on nothing happens in other words you're not able to track which button was clicked by the user which is why you need the click listener so we need to go here at the top 
in our main activity and we need to implement one more listener this would be the dialog interface dot on click listener now be careful on the on click listener there are two of them there's view dot on click listener and just dialog interface dot on click listener since we are building a dialog and we want to respond to click events from the dialog we are going to select this one so once you do this you're going to get an error saying that some methods are not implemented just press alt enter or option return on your command and say implement methods and there's the method on click which we need to work with click ok over here so you notice that it has two parameters first is the dialog interface then there is the parameter called which which simply identifies which button was clicked for example you can say switch you can use a switch statement and you can pass this which parameter inside and there will be two cases there will be case dialog interface dot button positive and there is a case which would be negative obviously so there's our switch case statement that is out here now all we need to do is go for the set positive button here and pass this as the parameter to indicate that our activity is the one who has implemented the dialog interface dot on click listener we need to do that for the other one as well now all we gotta do is test whether this works or not we can easily do that by having a toast so there you go there are my toast messages both of them let's run the app and try to see if we actually get the toast or not so there i go i click on here and you notice the first two toast messages come out there let's click ok there's the button message which says ok clicked click off here it goes to off again this time i click on the dialog pops open i'll click cancel now and there is the cancel being clicked so in this video i have shown you how to add the dialog how to add those buttons how to make our fancy layout file which has its own edit text and add that as a custom view to the dialog in the next video I will show you how to take the input or actually process the input and then we are going to make the timer work with that input. In the meantime, stay tuned with Design Coder. All the videos covering the design, the Android part and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.